Ladies and gentlemen, from the drumming capital of the universe, Dan Riley! Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Drum and Drummer. I'm Dan Riley. With me, as always, is my partner in crime, Chuck Double. Say hello, Chuck. Hello, Chuck. I stumbled upon this band from a buddy of mine. Please welcome Jeff Graham. Jeff Graham, there he is. Hi, Jeff. Good evening. So uh, when I first when I first saw the nerds, Mark McHale was the drummer. And so when did you join? I officially joined the fall of 2016. Okay, but you've been friends with these guys forever. Yeah, Mike Steinkamp is the brainchild behind the Retro Nerds. Uh, they've been around for at least 10 years or so, various iterations. Uh, Mark was the original drummer, um, but um, Mike and I have known uh, each other since college, way back in 88. So Chuck, you met Mike Steinkamp, didn't you? I did. He's yeah. great. Great bass yeah. player. It was fun. I went and saw your show. I had a great time. It was awesome. Cool. Oh, I didn't know that you had seen that. I didn't, I didn't know that you saw the Retro Nerds, Chuck. I, I did. Okay, cool. Jeff, take us back to when you, when did you know when you start, wanted to start playing drums? Like what made you want to just want to start playing drums? I'd say I was probably around eight whenever I really wanted to play. I come from a pretty musical family, mainly on my mom's side. Um, uh, her dad was a band director. Uh, her mom uh, played piano. Uh, my great grandfather was a professor in college and his wife gave piano lessons forever, so it, it kind of was kind of given, okay, well, my kid's gonna play piano and they're eventually gonna be in the band. Um, and, and so my sister and I both went through that route. I hated piano, but I, I knew I had to do it. So I think I maybe three or four years between age eight, nine, 10, I, I did it. Um, and I was dying to play, play drums, I said the whole time. Teacher said, you can play whatever instrument you want to play. And my parents rolled their eyes like, well, we know where we're going. <laughs> you know what's coming. Yeah, they yeah. knew it was coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So as it turns out to show my age, uh, this June is my 40th anniversary. How old were you when you first got your first drum set? First drum set, I was uh, 13. Do you remember what it was? It was a probably, I don't remember as far as a year, but I would guess it was probably a late 60s uh red sparkle ludwig very cheap set uh it was it was horrible so tell us about your current gear what are you playing now in the retro nerds uh right now it's where we're, we play electronic sets uh electronic drums um that has to do with as far as the way we run our sound and our sequencing we're in the 80s uh tribute bands so um that gives me flexibility to you know, try to mimic as many of those sounds of those songs at the time, but it's a DTX 562, I think is the actual numbers of Yamaha. Um, recently learned that they are not as far as that brain, which is, I think, a DTX 502 is the number. They are uh, actually have discontinued it. Uh, they've moved to a different, uh, different brain. So I was working to possibly expand um, and maybe move up to maybe a, a, a larger setting, but uh, as far as the setting, it's very flexible, uh, very versatile. Um, you can you can import sounds however you want. You can manipulate and, and create the those voices however you want. Uh, it's 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 incre incredibly flexible. Well, how many different drum kit changes do you do in a typical retro nerds gig? Typ typical nerd show will play around 45, 50 songs, and I'll use around between 12 and 15 different sets. Really, and so are those, so I know that the, um, so uh, for those of you that don't, have never seen the Retro Nerds, you need to go see them. They, they play the original, and help me out, Jeff, they, the, if I if I misstate this, but they play the original 80s video of the song that you guys are performing while you're performing. So you'll see it on like six different screens. Is that right? Right, yeah. So we, we do play the click. We do have um, some sequence tracks. We try to keep them low, but we don't have a keyboard player. So a lot of the keyboard parts come through there. Uh, and then Mike Steinkamp, uh, the genius, uh, has yeah. We, he takes the basically the original video and syncs everything up uh, with um, our tracks. And so you, we have several monitors on stage uh, where you can actually see the the original video and how we're synced up with it. But speaking of monitors, you don't have any you don't have any stage volume. No, it's all in ears. 
Yeah, so there's nobody with an amp. It's everything. So you guys can yep. play super quiet and still rock out. So, let, let, so back to your back to your sequencing thing. The, the show is triggered on uh, on a schedule where the song list goes um, transition to transition. Are your drum kit changes programmed, or do you have to change them yourself? They're programmed now. Originally, uh, no, uh, but we were able to link up via MIDI. Um, a lot in the past year and a half or so when we made that change over. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so I, I basically run off of two different brains. My, currently my snare and kick are off one brain because uh, Yamaha, these units only have two outs, left and right. And then um, the rest of the drum set is off of the other brain. And, and so then I, I basically create a set, I copy them over to both of them and then they, they, they give numbers. So then I, I send as far as we have a songs, and we maybe get a new song. Mike says, what set are you gonna use for this one? I'll say, I'm using set 57. He puts it in into the laptop. And so this one song ends, the next song, the next click starts, we get eight clicks and that set changes automatically. I don't touch a thing. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I, I you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of digital drums. I, I play digital drums at church on Sunday. I think it's, I think it's really cool that you're doing that. Can you take me back to, um, your your uh, drumming like did you drum throughout high school and college weren't you in like marching band and all that stuff uh, I, I i did i i went through all through as far as middle school high school um and i was basically if i could hit it i was trying to to be involved with it <laughs> um i was very fortunate my near the end of my seventh grade year um my teacher in jackson uh high school Recommended to take, take lessons from Dr. Donovan in Southeast Missouri Street, right there next door in Cape Girardeau. I studied with him all the way through until my senior year. I went to Southeast as a music major, basically graduated there actually with a music business degree. Um, I had three senior years at SEMO. That's how dedicated I was as a college student. <laughs> uh, so I marched, I actually marched um, all, all six seasons. Uh, <laughs> playing snare drum. Um, and then briefly, right before I was too old, I, I got into, involved into drum corps and uh, was marched with the um, Colts Drum and Bugle Corps out of Dubuque, Iowa when I was 21. And midway through that season, they asked me to come back the next year on staff. So I got to tour the next year and be on staff. Um, I didn't play snare drum. I played uh, in the pit, played keyboards, vibraphone, marimba, uh, hand percussion, timpani, all that sort of thing. So. Dr. Dunham was, was big about building percussionists, not just drummers. Um, and because of that, I rarely actually played drum set in college because I knew that uh, I'm not gonna be able to play a $50,000 set of timpani when I'm 50. I'm not gonna be able to play a, own a $30,000 marimba. This is your own shot? This is your only shot kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. So so those opportunities are out there for me to do that. Um, but I really concentrate in those disciplines uh, all through school and so I would, Played in percussion ensemble, jazz ensemble. I played at all the pet bands. As far as that was my drum setting in, in college, but a lot of a lot as far as rudimentary uh, drumming and and you know, as far as the drum line sort of thing too. Who are your uh, influences on drums? Uh, in, influences, um, I would say I got actually most of my influence as far as rock and roll and, and drumming from my dad. Strangely, my dad was more the listener uh, than my mom, even though my you know the music really came from my mom's side. But he was big into listening to um, a lot of country, but he would listen to a lot of like rock in the 70s and 80s. He was buying, in the 80s, he was buying his Dire Straits cassettes and ZZ Top cassettes, and he was he was loving all that stuff. Um, but the, he was a huge Eagles fan, so Don Henley was probably the first big influence I had as far as really wanting to play. But then after, you know, I got, you know, as far as the playing, the, the police were a huge influence. I, I, I love to steal and copy from Stuart Copeland as much as I possibly can. Um, but uh, but then I, as far as when I got into, as far as high school and college and I started reading modern drummer magazines, you know, I was reading as far as all of these studio guys and then I started to search out their stuff. So Manu Kache was, was a, a great guy. Um, of course, Steve Gadd, if you go back you know, to those things. So I, I'm, I'm not a hard player. I do like as far as those articulate things. I, from a rudimentary background, I, you know, I'll play a lot of rudiments and double strokes and stuff, that sort of thing. So a lot of those players kind of you know, have those type of things when they, they play. Well, I'm, uh, I'm thankful that you joined us, but before we get out of here, I, I need to ask you, um, what are you pimping? What's your next gig? What, tell us about your next gigs coming up. 
The nerds are super busy. Check out RetroNerds.com for our, our schedule. Uh, we're on Facebook as well. We're down at Lake the Ozarks quite a bit. Uh, we, we got in there last summer and we're probably down there a good dozen times this summer. I'm looking forward to catching a couple of those gigs and maybe I'll drag Chuck with me. I appreciate you joining us, Jeff. And um, um, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you at the Retro Nerds gigs. Everybody be sure and go see this band. It's really a fun time, especially if you're a fan of 80s music, but you don't even need to be a fan of 80s music to enjoy their show. They do a really great job. It looks like they're just having fun and and even though there's a lot of production production there they just have a blast it's a really fun show so uh, chuck i'm sorry do you have something you wanted to say oh i was just gonna tell the people to bring their dancing shoes it's all like dance yeah. dance music yeah definitely definitely yeah. yeah yeah and and come to the stage and get your nerd glasses we love handing those out <laughs> yeah. I, hey, dude yeah. i wear mine i wear mine every day bro <laughs> i just i don't have the piece of tape i took it off <laughs> so, yeah, like Jeff said, be sure and go grab your nerd glasses, go up to the stage. And while you're there, if you're a drummer, give Jeff a little shout out and maybe throw a stick his way or something or throw a $20 bill his way or something like that. Um, we're, we're, uh, Jeff, again, thanks so much for joining us. You guys uh, look for the next episode and uh, we'll talk to you later. Say good night, Chuck. Good night, Chuck. See you, Jeff. See you, Jeff. Bye. 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 Bye.